Hi friends, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm coming to you with a super casual May wrap up. I just finished the book that I was currently reading so I thought now is the time. There's only one more day left in the month so I figured now is the time to film this. Okay, the first and I read 10 books this month. Let me put that out there and I have a lot of thoughts so I'm going to try to get through it a little snappy. Okay, the first book that I read this month is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. I only rated this two out of five stars because I didn't really know going in that it was a sci-fi thriller. I just thought it was a thriller and I wasn't really expecting those sci-fi elements. Um, but let me tell you about the story. So it starts, the story starts with a man and wife. They're at home. Um, they're having like a casual night at home with their son. They're eating dinner. He ends up shooting out to like a bar to meet one of his friends. And on his way home, he gets kidnapped. And when he wakes up, he is um, surrounded by all these people that seem to know him, but he doesn't know them. And he's kind of like in an alternate dimension. And throughout the entire story, he's basically trying to get back to his wife and his son in like his timeline. Um, I found this to be super repetitive, especially once you got to the cube bit and they were going through trying to find his place. Um, so super repetitive and the dialogue was cheesy and pretty lame. And like I said, I didn't really know it was sci-fi going in. I guess I should have known, but I didn't. And I don't read that genre a lot. So I know a lot of people like this book. So it's probably a me rather than the story. But for me personally, it was a two out of five stars. The next book that I read is Into the Water by Paula Hawkins. This is about the main characters whose sister dies in their hometown. So she has to like go home and like take care of her niece and also while she's there they're wondering I guess in their hometown there's this pond or pool or body of water it's called the drowning pool um women have gone there over the ages and have mysteriously died in the water around the water in the water and um the same was for her sister and she's wondering like was it suicide was it murder and you're trying to unravel that what I will suggest or what really helped me when I was reading this is I took notes on the 11 different characters um perspectives that we got in this so each time I came across a new character I took little like stats bio like little bullet points about the characters so I would remember who it was and relations going forward because there's several different there's two different detectives there's a couple of different families like that you're following like the husband the wife the children um there's a couple of side characters and in the beginning it's hard to keep track of like who is who and um stuff like that and like who are they related to and so forth and um I was able to keep track of like the care like what I felt about the characters in the story and also what the other characters felt about in the story um, but I did I wrote a couple of notes like trigger warnings and stuff like that down so I want to just go over those really quickly trigger warning for graphic scene involving eating disorder bulimia trigger warning for disturbing animal scene trigger warning for nonviolent rape scene um, and I know that seems weird to say like a nonviolent rape scene but <sighs> And I really did like the quote on page 254 um, about how one of the characters, but anyway, um, a, there was a great discussion about rape and there was a sexual orientation slur and there was fat shaming and I think it was meant to be fat shaming because this one character that was fat shaming you're not supposed to like. So I think it was like intentional fat shaming if that's a thing. Um, There's so many perspectives. Um, short chapters, all the characters are important, and the ending could have been more dramatic, and I think that that would have really, like, made it more than four stars, because from all these different characters' perspective, you're getting, like, so much, and the ending was just kind of, like, one note, so... That was a little let down, but I really enjoyed that and gave it four stars. Okay, the next book that I read was Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid, one of my all-time favorite authors. I think this is the third book that I have read by her, and I think every single book has been five stars. Um, and I also read another book by her this month that I will talk about shortly. But this is told in a 
interview style and I know that turned a lot of people off so I heard a lot of people saying check out the audiobook check out the audiobook so that's exactly what I did and it reminded me of that movie Almost Famous and it also reminded me of like old Rolling Stones interviews that I would read in the Rolling Stone magazine. This is set in like the 1970s and it's about this rock and roll band, um, Daisy Jones and the Six. Well, actually it's a band and then Daisy Jones joins the band to make them more appealing and more, um, I guess like hmm, relatable as a band. And um, it's about Billy and Daisy writing an album together. Aurora is the name of the album. And you have, it's just, it's literally told like as if there was an interviewer asking different questions about like the like short stint that they had together as a band, why they broke up and so forth. And I also forgot this. So freaking tragic. Look at that. My book completely fell apart. <laughs> so I don't know if that was just love or what, but um, what I did like about this other than like the interview style, it really fit with like that rock and roll, um, almost famous Rolling Stones like interview style. Um, it does have the album Aurora, like all the songs in the back with the lyrics and everything. And I really wish that they would have included the performance on the audiobook that would have just taken it over the freaking top. But I still rated it five out of five stars. Um, I did have a couple of notes here. Um, obviously, trigger warnings for substance abuse, addiction, and also abortion. Um, the things that I really loved about it was Daisy Jones as a character, the seven rock and roll vibes the format fit the storyline in my opinion like you're reading about a band and like I said it just felt like a Rolling Stones interview um, there were so many great quotes and themes um, things that I wish that could have been a little bit better is I wanted more from Billy's character um, I said that I wish the album was performed um, in the book there is an author and they don't really reveal who the author is and I wish that we would have as the reader known who the author was from the very beginning. I think that would have added another layer to the story. However, it also helps with the re readability of the story is because now that you know who the author is, you kind of want to go back and read it and see if you get like additional clues. Um, so like I said, serious, almost famous vibes, serious, like old school, um, Rolling Stones interview with band vibes and I just really liked it so I gave that one five stars and the next book I read I read on or I listened to it on audiobook because I don't think it's available in print I think it's only available in ebook and audiobook and that is Evidence of the Affair by Taylor Jenkins Reid this is a short story and I don't read a lot of short stories and what I thought was interesting is this one is completely like interview format Evidence of the Affair is completely um letters so this one woman um is suspicious of her husband having an affair and she reaches out to the woman's husband by a letter and they start corresponding back and forth so it's completely you know dear him and then he writes back dear her and it just kind of goes back and forth and the story kind of just like unravels and they kind of like figure out what was going on and it's it's so interesting it's so short um i did catch a day Daisy Jones reference in there. I loved, it was also set in the 70s. I loved the letter format. Um, I wish there was more to the story. I wish it was a full length novel. Um, maybe they could have had letters and then a little story part and then a letter and then story parts. But um, I did love just the strictly like letter format. Um, I hope that there's a part two, but also the cover of the audiobook ebook is absolutely gorgeous. So I hope they print it as well. I ended up rating this four out of five stars. Okay, next up I read 99% Mine by Sally Thorne and this was a complete letdown. I absolutely loved um, The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. It was one of my like favorite books of last year that I read and this one was just so different than her first book. It made me feel like while I was reading this and even afterwards and still today, like I feel like 
her first book, it was her idea, but someone ghost wrote it. And then this was her first book that she actually wrote because this felt so immature. The writing was pretty much horrible. I didn't really feel the connection between um, Darby, Darcy and Tom and the cheesy romance. Like some things were just so cheesy. And I think I did a full like um reading vlog when i was reading this but basically um darcy yeah darcy and her brother jamie are twins they inherited their grandmother's like ramshackled cottage what it's tumbled down cottage from their grandmother and darcy's kind of staying behind at the cottage to oversee their renovation so they can sell it for the money and who does the renovation tom the person that she's had a crush on forever and then sparks fly between Darcy and Tom and um there's just there's kind of like lots of loose ends with the story I also took some notes about this okay so the things that I liked I really did like Tom's character um and I liked the house renovation storyline and I liked Patty the dog um I liked that there was representation for a character with a heart condition but there's more stuff that I didn't like um, so the Darcy at the very beginning, she's like working at a bar and those first couple of chapters in relation to the entire story feel completely useless to me. So there was no reason for them to be, even be in there. Um, the cheesy dialogue, the consensual possessiveness, um, they found like a tarot card, like hidden behind a tile in a bathroom, but like nothing was ever said about it anymore. So it was like, why was that even in there? Um, and then even though I loved the house renovation thing, they could have done so much more with that. But then when they finished renovating the house and they went to sell it or like put it for sale and that finished product, like that just went by so freaking quick and I didn't really like that. And then also Darcy and Jamie, they're twins, they're not speaking and you never find out why or like what happened with them or maybe it just wasn't clear and they did tell me. Um, I also didn't like that everybody attributed um, Darcy's she was feeling okay with her heart but then when things with her and Tom weren't good her heart started acting up and then everybody when she started feeling better they're like oh because it's because Tom's around and I just didn't like that they were like attributing her feeling good when Tom was around and her feeling bad when Tom was not around didn't like that one do not recommend and I will say that I'm probably going to check out her next book just to see like what I think once and for all for the writing because first story loved it this one not so much so my final thoughts on this is that it was cute a cute story idea but the writing was horrible and I spent half the time um hoping that Tom and Darcy would work out and then the other time wishing that Tom would just find someone better fitted to him so that's my final thoughts on that one read still me by Jojo Moyes this is the third book in the trilogy um let's see me before you after you in this one I absolutely loved me before you after you was a total letdown for me so I wanted to go ahead and finish out the trilogy and see what I thought once and for all I will say that me before you is my favorite of the trilogy um I think it would have just been better as a standalone rather than drag the story out and try to make it like continue but at the same time it's like after the events of the first book you kind of do wonder where does Louisa Cart go from here and I am happy to report that I did overall enjoy her character arc and the ending that she got for herself so happy about that um other than that, she goes to New York to take this job working for another pretty wealthy family. And I liked the New York City vibes. I liked the characters that she met in here outside of the family that she was working for. Um, what else did I say about this? Um, so I love the characters, the New York vibes, and the ending, like I said, that she got... I liked that. However, this just felt very one note. Um, through the ups and downs of things that were happening in here and the different subplots and the different characters and everything, nothing felt 
more important than the last thing that I read. So for that reason, I gave this three out of five stars. Next up, I read Fierce Kingdom by Jen Phillips and I rated this three out of five stars and I did an entire review of this book already. So if you're interested in my full thoughts, definitely check out that video. I will have it linked for you down below and in the cards above. Um, however, just to give you a brief synopsis, um, a mother and her son get trapped in a zoo and there are gunmen in the zoo going around killing people and animals. Um, I do think it oversteps the bounds of animal, um, graphic animal scenes. Um, just knowing that there's armed gunmen killing animals and people in the zoo is enough for me. I don't need it spelled out for me what things look like and so forth. So I guess it just depends like as a reader what bothers you and what doesn't. But it's a very short book so it's a quick read and it was a page turner and I was like definitely flipping 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 to find out what would ultimately happen it's mainly told from one point of view the mothers but there are a couple of chapters told from different points of view and then i moved on to the female of the species by mindy mcginnis i also read another book by mindy mcginnis it was not a drop to drink i read that so long ago um and i remember it being like okay but nothing to like write home about and i kind of feel the same way about this one and i think that's a pretty unpopular opinion because looking on Goodreads like everybody raved about this book but to me it was just kind of average. Um, I do think it opens up a good like talking point about rape culture. Um, however, I also think it kind of gives in to some of the stereotypes of having that like bitchy girl that's sexy and popular and has a lot of friends and she's a cheerleader but she's slut shamed and there's girl on girl hate and it's just kind of it's kind of defeating its own purpose um but the story is told from three different points of view um and i think that sometimes it was thoughtful and nuanced and the other time i just didn't understand the point so there were three points of view but there were like two other kind of mainish characters that I think we would have benefited and got to know their character more and why they were the way they were if we would have gotten chapters from them but since we didn't you know also trigger warnings for rape graphic animal scenes and there were actually two graphic animal scenes in this one was so one of the main characters um works at this like animal shelter place and they find found some puppies and they kind of like went into detail about what happened to them and then the other one that really stood out to me that was kind of completely pointless um was that one of the other points of view his father works at like a slaughterhouse and they went into detail about that and that was just complete had nothing to do with the story so i didn't understand so more graphic animal scenes for you <laughs> served up in this one so yeah i didn't care for it that much but i'm glad that it opened up the conversation um yeah three stars and i picked up no exit by taylor adams and i absolutely loved this i rated this five stars i really kind of want to do another thriller thursday with this one and do a full review um this is the story of our main character who gets trapped at a rest stop on her way home um because of snowmageddon and there's like four other people at the rest stop with her and she is trying to get cell phone service and she can't she's kind of like wandering out in the parking lot and she thinks she sees this girl in the back of a van in a cage and the more she thinks about it like she's like that's not that can't be right but then she goes to like reinvestigate and finds out no there really is a girl in the back of this van in a cage like so one of these people at the rest stop that has to be their vehicle and like omg so it just kind of goes from there but what i loved about the story is like it hit pedal to the metal the entire time you were never like try this do that go there do just everything that you would be screaming at a normal thriller to do like this one did and so much more also this book features one of the most twisted characters i have ever read about ever 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 so 
yes I highly recommend this if you like thrillers isolation stories something that's gonna be super fast-paced page turn to the end yeah absolutely loved this one five out of five stars if you're interested in a thriller Thursday about this where I go more into my thoughts let me know by giving this video a thumbs up and letting me know in the comment section down below okay now the last book that I read this month and I just finished it this evening is the lies we told by Camila way this book took me 10 freaking days to read um, I think it took me 10 days to read because there's two timelines um, in the first timeline we meet Hannah who is this like psychopath little girl she shows no emotion she seems to be delighted when people are hurt um, and then in the second timeline we meet Clara who is searching for her missing um, boyfriend who like disappeared without a trace um, and as a reader you know eventually the two timelines are going to intersect but the years are so vastly different you're kind of wondering like how they will intersect and when they will intersect and each of the timelines you're not bored but you're just not invested or at least I wasn't so um, I kept reading and I thought about DNF in it like so many times but I was just like eventually it's gonna get good eventually it's gonna get good so I kept reading and once the reveals happened like it really picked up um, and it got pretty good but I think my final thoughts are is that it was too slow for me and I didn't really like attach myself to any of the characters I really didn't care ultimately what happened it was just interesting to read about and like the twist just kept coming um so yeah I gave this one three out of five stars so those are the 10 books that I read this month I know this was pretty long if you need more thoughts about any particular book or you want to chat to me about any of these particular books check me out on Instagram check me out on Twitter leave a comment down below and I'll make sure to follow you back so we can like chat about a specific book if you would like a review about a specific book let me know and I will consider doing that as well but thank you for joining me for this casual May wrap-up I tried to film it the other day and I just like it wasn't good and so I wanted to like include this one as well and I just wanted to get this out to you guys sooner rather than later because things are crazy for me at work so bear with me as my school year comes to an end and I'll catch you guys in my next video I hope you're hanging in there I hope you're excited about summer let me know some videos that you want to see coming up this summer and I'll see you guys again soon bye, bye.